Hey, what's going on? It's Nick with the Leah Auto Group, and I'm here with D Scout from Kiss 1023 and these two lovely ladies. This is Katie and Michelle. Katie, hey. how would you describe yourselves? Psychic medium. Why do we have two awesome psychic mediums with us? This is the first edition of the Ghost Wrangler, where we're going to have four videos during the month of October where we're going to hunt down some ghosts. Today, we are heading to Albany, Albany Rural, Rural Cemetery. Cemetery. And who is buried in the Albany Rural Cemetery? Chester yeah. A. Arthur. That is right. All right, we're going to try to get an interview, message, interview, however you want to say it, with Chester uh, A. Arthur on the state of our nation. All right, so let's, uh, real quick, let's go through some uh, history with you guys. Um, Katie, how did you uh, how did you discover your, your talent? I've been like this since I was three years old. I am born and raised in Rotterdam, and I'm Irish Catholic, youngest of three. My mom was the first person to recognize that I could do this. Mm -hmm. And she realized what I was doing was basically hearing and um, like reading her thoughts. So then the first time that it happened at the age of three, I was, she was getting ready for dinner and she went to the refrigerator mm -hmm. and realized there was no milk in the refrigerator. And she was thinking to herself, I gotta go to the market and get milk. And mm -hmm. I walked out in the kitchen and said, we're gonna leave now, we're gonna go get milk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness. And she was <laughs> literally looked at me and was like, Awesome. How about uh, you, Michelle? How did you discover that you got this Well, talent? I was also born this way. <laughs> my parents had a little bit of a, a clue when I was, um, my, they, I'm Irish Catholic as well. I was uh, baptized. Um, my parents brought me to see my great, great aunt Kitty, who lived on Western Avenue across from WT's. Huh. And she held me and she looked at me and said, this child will be able to see the future. Hmm. So she, in fact, herself was psychic, and so she recognized that in me. So growing up, you know, I saw dead people. I had a hard time sleeping at night because there'd be folks standing at the foot of my bed. <clears throat> Whenever a family member was getting ready to cross or someone in the neighborhood, I'd get up and go to my parents and say, so-and-so died. I'm trying to you immediately can feel the energy, though, shift. Usually yeah. you don't in a cemetery, and you can no, I keep seeing the soldier walking around, and he's in Civil War uniform. Oh, wait, there's a, there's a William right here. Oh, is it really? Yeah. William Morris? William Morris, 1843. Is he a soldier? Was he a soldier? He doesn't say anything. I don't see any. Uh, he might be. Just Blackers. before we started to um, roll, mm -hmm. I kept seeing a soldier, um, like, basically circling us. And he was in Civil War uniform, and I kept getting the name William. Very serious face. Oh, yeah, William. Um, and yeah. they just discovered that there's a William right behind us. <laughs> Why don't you explain to everybody who we're standing in front of? We are standing in front of President Chester Allen Arthur. He was, of course, the 21st President of the United States. People always ask us, why is he buried in Albany? His family, his father, was a preacher out in Loudonville at the time that the cemetery was incorporated and had already bought a family plot here. So when Arthur's wife died, he had her buried in the family plot. And then when he died, it was very logical to bury him next to his wife. So technically, he is not in this monument. He's buried in an unmarked grave next to her Which behind it. Which is beautiful, it. by the way. It's stunning. Absolutely beautiful. It, really is. it is. And I was really hoping today that we would get an interview with uh, our past president here. Do you guys, are you getting anything? <laughs> I am not getting anything. Nothing. From, from, no, anything I'm from never. such a jackass. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying. I mean, how, how often do you have the opportunity to be able to maybe speak to an <laughs> ex-president? Yeah, you know, this is <laughs> nothing. I, I wanted to know from you, in your experience of being here in the rural cemetery, have you had any personal uh, haunting experiences? Yes, I have. So what have you seen or what have you felt while you're out here? On one occasion, I was here with my boyfriend. This was maybe six years ago. We were walking a very old section. We had split up. He was maybe two, three sections away on his phone. I'm alone <laughs> at this point. Someone came up behind me and they just laid their hand on my head like that and there was no wow. way behind me. Turned around thinking perhaps he had just, you know, come creepy up so behind me, but I could see him all the way down the path. So, a, a little bit of the history, uh, you probably get stories all the time or people probably report it. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the history here that people mm. have said about Albany Rural Cemetery. I have actually been compiling ghost stories gradually oh. over the years. 
Yes. Love that. And actually, in October, I'm going to be featuring some of them on our Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And people have been telling ghost stories about this place since at least the end of the Civil War. Mm. Wow. And that's wow. how old the cemetery the is. The cemetery, it was incorporated in 1841. Wow. It was dedicated in 1844, and we had our first burial the following year. Wow. Who's the first burial? David Strain. Mm. But he was not alone. It's, he's always mentioned as the first burial. Mm-hmm. His sister and a woman, I believe, was his grandmother, were also buried at the same time. So there were three first burials. Were they? They all passed at the same time. Were they no, moved? They oh. were moved okay. from. There used to be a cemetery in Washington Park, mm-hmm. and he had died just before this place was open for burial. So he would have been in the public receiving vault in the cemetery that was known as the State Street burying grounds. Mm-hmm. And then eventually that entire burying ground was moved here, too. Do you want to share your uh, Facebook with us? Sure. If you go on Facebook, just look for Historic Albany Rural Cemetery. And as I mentioned earlier, I am going to be sharing some haunting stories Yay. every week in October. And we also the, we have the, the wreath ceremony, correct? Yes, what, October what the t- 5th, 11 a.m. Now, there's a little boy. He's probably only three or four years mm-hmm. old. That's right here with the father. Yep. The father is very, very handsome. He keeps talking about property, land, and either land was taken. The handsome dad, right? The father. The yeah. father is very handsome. And that was the one that we saw in front of the monument before. He's and pacing. because He keeps pacing. And there's, there's something an about injustice. family. I almost yeah. think that he outlived everybody in the family. But he had wanted the property preserved. And not so much the cemetery. I'm talking about his land. And it was not preserved. So, All right, so you can actually feel the energy coming off of this. And it's actually like like sad. Oh, Michelle. You see? Yep, right, right there. Mm-hmm. When I started to take the picture, there was the orb. You know, you can go to life. You don't need to stay here anymore. Too unexpected, too soon. Didn't get a chance to say goodbye. Yeah, there's certain spots that they don't want to. Oh, that was something. Did you hear that, Nick? Yeah, well, yeah. That's... It's so what did I just say before yeah. he went uh, over there? Wait, back I think away. Nick just heard them close that door. Mm-hmm. What door? No, I felt something in the ground. Oh, oh okay. Back away. Go ahead, take a peek in there so you can see anything. There are certain spots that they don't want us. They know that what we do, and it's almost like a barrier. They repel us. It's kind of like, um, yeah, it's like, like a force field that you can't enter into. You're probably going to want to clear, you get a clearing before yeah, you go yeah, home. Yep. What happened? That was definitely a demon, and it was cloven feet, and it was it was very angry. Oh, great. And it's been here a long time. Whoever kept it here has, has kept, it, like, kept it here. And the question is, now that I have come in contact with a demon, <laughs> I want to know. Well, there's the what are version. what are some yeah. of the, what are the, some of the symptoms? First well, show, first episode. First episode. And I'm starting to contact with demons. With demons. So that was quick. not for nothing. This yes. is the first conversation I've ever had started with. Now that I've come in contact <laughs> with a demon, <laughs> what are some of the warning signs I have to look for? Okay, headaches, headaches. headaches. I get headaches already. Anger, unexplained anger. He gets that already headaches. too. Yeah, this is wait. This what? is every day. This is him. Oh really? Yes. Yeah, maybe that's why it likes you. Um, Sleeplessness. Yeah. Can't sleep. Oh, weird dreams. Okay. Yeah, um, like you're vivid. Dreaming. Vivid dreaming. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, huh. Our very first episode, we didn't even get the opportunity to meet uh, Chester Arthur, but I am being smudged because I did get the opportunity to meet a demon. So now that we've been smudged, the demons are gone. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Apparently, I've battled. I've been holding on to a lot of demons, not not figuratively, but literally. So <laughs> it's, it's good to let those go. You guys also have a podcast. Tell us about the podcast. Uh, Psychic on the scene available wherever you get your podcast. iHeartRadio, Apple. It does. We're, we're pretty much everywhere. Uh, it's myself and the two ladies. We talk about pretty much everything. Anything we, and everything paranormal. All right, and for next week, it looks like we're going to be taking a trip to a small little town that nobody's ever heard of called Schenectady, New okay. York. <laughs> Yes, that's right. One of our top three cities here in the local capital region. Yeah, we're going to go and hunt down some ghosts and uh, check out, see what the city of Schenectady has for their little personal demons. My hometown.